Welcome back, guys. This is our lecture on projectile motion at an angle launch. Uh, as we like to say, hold on to your butts. This one's going to get rough. All right, here we go. So uh, what we're doing this time is we're launching our objects at an angle. Uh, that means we need to do a little bit of trigonometry to calculate the horizontal and vertical velocities. Uh, but overall, our problem-solving method is the exact same thing we've done in the past. We're going to go ahead and find the overall flight time for our objects using our vertical motion analysis. Then we're going to find the overall horizontal distance using our horizontal motion analysis. So a quick step, just a couple of reminders of a few things. For horizontal motion, we know that if we neglect air resistance, because it's often negligible for speeds that we're dealing with, we say that the acceleration is therefore 0 meters per second squared, and our horizontal velocity to start with and at any point is going to be a fixed value, Vx. This doesn't change. Okay. Then we're often trying to find you know, the overall horizontal displacement. This is going to depend on Vx times delta t. Okay. So this is the sort of guiding equation for us. Vertical motion, we have the acceleration is negative 10 meters per second squared. This is our acceleration due to gravity. Right. Then we have our... Uh, vertical velocity initial, which today we're going to calculate as our overall velocity times sine theta. Okay. And our vertical velocity final, well, that's going to change and be something that we'd have to use our kinematic equations to find. All right. But what we're shooting for is finding delta t with our vertical motion. That's the same delta t used in our horizontal motion. Why? because our object that we're talking about is in fact the same object. As soon as our object hits the ground, well, there's no more flight time for it to travel horizontally. So it's going to be our limiting time from our vertical motion. All right, so what's going on with this trig stuff, Mr. Miller? What a great question. If we go ahead and throw an object, we've seen before that we can describe its overall motion with these nice diagonal lines, right? That's what we see when you throw an object. It moves in a nice trajectory. And we said that we can evaluate that as horizontal velocities and vertical velocities, right? And so if we were to take this same exact diagram and, say, redraw it, we would get the diagram below. And notice how these form nice little triangles. In fact, the velocity at any point, we could say, is actually equal to, you know, uh, it's a resultant that comes from to component velocities. Our overall velocity is a resultant of the y component and the x component of our velocities. It just so turns out that if you were to go ahead and apply some trigonometry, that our vertical velocity, vy, is equal to the overall velocity times the sine of the angle, and our horizontal velocity is equal to the overall velocity times the cosine of our angle, all right? If we're, say, lucky enough to have both these two values be known to us, we could work backwards, and we could find the horizontal velocity using our resultant velocity equation up here, all right? This is just a geometric equation, geometry equation, all right? Let's get a tiny bit of practice with that. So a ball is thrown an initial velocity of 25 meters per second at an angle of... 30 degrees, okay? What are the initial vertical and horizontal components of velocity? All right, well, the vertical component is V sine theta. That would be 25 meters per second times sine of 30 degrees, right? Simple as that. Our horizontal is V cosine theta, and that would be 25 meters per second times cosine 30. Okay, example two, exact same thing. Our velocity is 30 meters per second, and our angle is 45 degrees. So Vy is 30 meters per second times sine of 45 degrees. Vx is 30 meters per second times cosine of 45 degrees. All right, example three and four, go ahead and try on your own. All right, so all you had to do is plug in. Vy is 15 meters per second at an angle of 
sine of 90 degrees, okay? Vx is 15 meters per second at cosine of 90 degrees, all right? Which, coincidentally, should be zero. Okay, why? This would be our object is launched straight up, okay? Example four, Vy equals 50 meters per second, sine of 10 degrees. Vx is 50 meters per second, cosine of 10 degrees. Okay. All right, we're ready for the punishment, Mr. Miller. Give us the hard problems. Oh, man. Okay, here we go. Glad you asked. So we go ahead and we launch an object on a flat surface like this. Okay, we recognize that as we launch it, our velocity can be shown like this. All right, we get a horizontal, we get a vertical component. All right, so step one, with our little table, write out what we know. Well, vertical motion, we say, the acceleration is always 10 meters per second squared. All right, in this case, our delta y, well, we're starting and ending at the same height, so our delta y is zero meters. Okay, we don't know delta t, we'd like to find that. Our vy initial, we say is v sine theta, right? Horizontal motion, we know the acceleration is zero, doesn't change. That means that our vx, which is v cosine theta, is going to be very valuable. Our delta x is what we want to find, that's vx times delta t. This delta t and this one are the exact same. So let's go ahead and go step by step. The x component of velocity, vx, equals v cosine theta. We practiced this. 250 meters per second times cosine of 25 degrees. Excellent. The y component is v sine of theta. That's 250 meters per second times sine of 25 degrees. Okay. Our time in the flight. Normally, we'd use this equation, but if we went and had to use this equation, we'd have our initial velocity, and we have time in two different places, and then we'd have to use the quadratic formula, and we'd rather not use the quadratic formula if we can avoid it. So let's go ahead and use this equation. All right? Here's a trick. So this particular equation here relies on knowing v initial, uh, v final, excuse me. v final, in this case... We have a nice symmetric problem, right? We have our object gets all the way to the top. It's lost all of its velocity to get to the top. And then it spends the entire time getting all that velocity back. It's symmetric, okay? And so in this symmetric problem, our v final is actually equal to the negative v initial. Why? Because it's going upwards here, and now it's going downwards. So we would say that our v final is our negative v initial. And so we can use v final equals v initial plus a times t as our equation. And then for, therefore we get t is equal to v final minus v initial over a. And so we get, therefore, negative v sine theta minus v sine theta divided by negative 10 meters per second. That would give us negative 2 V sine theta divided by 10, okay, as our time. Yikes, Mr. Miller. Could we actually plug that into our calculator to solve? Certainly. Okay. Horizontal distance traveled is just equal to Vx times our delta T. Okay. Our Vx is v cosine theta, all right, our delta t is negative 2 v sine theta over 10, okay? So all I've done is I've solved this out algebraically without plugging in any actual values. It's a very, like, uh, sort of clever, but, you know, uh, a little bit more advanced physics trick, okay? If you're, you're welcome to, at every single step, plug in your actual values and keep it simple for yourself, okay? All right, if we're shooting something off of a cliff, all right, we're ready for even harder, right? Yeah, okay. So if we shoot something off of a cliff, the exact same problem, except now we have an interesting case 
where, you know, our final velocity is not going to equal our initial velocity vertically. It's not symmetric anymore, right? Yikes. Okay, so what do we do? Well, step one, let's write out what we know. Acceleration is negative 10 meters per second squared. Great. In this case, we actually know that the overall change in height is going to be our delta y, negative 10, or negative 100 meters. Okay, so our delta y is negative 100 meters. We know our initial vertical velocity is going to be v sine theta. Okay. We want to find delta t. And in this case, we're going to have to use the quadratic formula occasionally, unfortunately, but we'll have to get there in a second. Horizontal velocity, we have acceleration is zero. Our vx, which doesn't change, is v cosine theta. Okay. We're going to look for delta x being our horizontal displacement. That's vx times delta t. And we need the delta t from our vertical motion to solve that. All right, horizontal motion x component of our velocity is v cosine theta, 250 meters per second times cosine of 45 degrees. Okay, y component initially is v sine theta, that's 250 meters per second times sine of 45 degrees. Okay. All right, I've done this problem before, so this is going to end up being 105 meters per second, roughly. Our time of flight. Okay, and this one is a little bit trickier. We know this value. We know this value. We know this value. And so we want to find delta t. In this case, we're going to have to take advantage of an equation. The quadratic formula is x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. That's to find the roots of problems that look like this. 0 equals ax squared minus bx plus c. Right? Maybe we have seen this in math. Okay, And so we need to put, say, this equation into a form that looks like this so that we can apply the quadratic formula to, so to solve for t. Yikes! That's why we practice. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and say delta y is equal to <laughs> our v, uh, vy initial times delta t plus 1 half times a times delta t squared. Okay? We're going to subtract delta y on both sides. Okay, we're going to go ahead and rewrite that. So we have 0 equals 1 half a delta t squared plus vy initial times delta t minus vy. Okay, and now we're in our quadratic formula form. All right, and so we can go ahead and solve for t. t is equal to negative vy initial, and then we're going to take the positive form of this, but the square root of vy initial squared minus 4 times a, a is 1 half times acceleration, times c, which is negative delta y, okay, all over 2 times a, which is 1 half times acceleration. Okay? Yikes! All right? We can simplify by plugging in actual values. Once we've gotten that, we can find our horizontal displacement as Vx times this t we just found. And you can plug in V cosine theta times t. Okay? Oh, man. We need some practice. Okay, we're going to do that in class. All right, to summarize very quickly, all we've done is we've, say, we've solved essentially the same problems as before. Um, we start with determining the time to hit the ground with our vertical motion. Then we use our horizontal motion to find the overall horizontal displacement, but we need to find the time to fall 
from our vertical motion. We've supplemented our previous knowledge with the idea that if we launch at an angle, then we have our vertical velocity and our horizontal velocity are uh, components that are given to us from trig. All right, so Vy equals V sine theta, horizontal velocity equals V cosine theta. All right, as we said, we held on to our butts, and now we're done. All right, back to class.